Today, let's collect Usagi Yojimbo. Hey everyone, welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and another episode in our Let's Collect series. Today we're doing another non-Marvel DC character. We're trying to do a few more of these and we're going to focus on Usagi Yojimbo, uh, Stan Sakai's epic tailing of Japanese samurai culture uh, through the eyes of a samurai rabbit. <laughs> um, this series has been around since the mid-80s. Uh, Sakai has been the artist, the writer for all of it. Uh, we've done, he's been at, series has been at Fantagraphics, Mirage, Dark Horse for the longest time, and now currently at IDW. And for the most part, Stan has done all the art, all the writing, all the covers until basically recently with the IDW where there's been variants and stuff. But yeah, this is his character, his epic story, and it is fantastic if you've never read it. So we're going to be talking Usagi Yojimbo today. As always, a little pointer about how I do this in terms of, because we're going to be talking the key comics, uh, the important or fun stories, and the fun covers um, today is how we break it down on Let's Collect. For values, in order for this video to be a little more relevant, I don't give exact values. I put them in categories. I'm going to show you those categories now. So you have an understanding of just where I'm talking in terms of prices. But yeah, so we're going to start with the key comics for Usagi. Um, we got to split in the... Normally I do 10 key comics. Today we're going to do 15. We're going to do 10 comics focused on Usagi himself. Uh, and then another five comics that are some of the side characters and that kind of stuff in the series. I did this before when I did uh, Spawn where I had some of the side key books as well. So that's the way we're going to do this. So Usagi books and then the rest of the characters a little bit as well. So first up, let's talk about those key comics. First up, we're going to start with the keys and we're going to start with Usagi's first appearance uh, in Albedo number two from 1984. Uh, his first cover, his first appearance, and obviously this is the biggest Usagi book out there. Next, we're going to talk about Usagi. Albedo number three, his second appearance. He's not on the cover here, but he does appear in this book, uh, and it does go for good value as well. Um, the, he was basically part of this series before he got his own. Uh, Albedo number four, his third appearance, second cover, uh, and a pretty good cover, actually, one I considered for my covers list. Uh, next, he moves on to, he got kind of a preview Usagi Ojimbo summer special in 1986. This was kind of a trial run before he got his own series, so he's before he stepped out and Fantagraphics gave him his own solo run. Uh, next, we have Doomsday Squad, number three from 1986. This is the first Usagi story in color. Goes for super cheap, and yeah, but it is kind of a fun key. Next, we have Usagi Yojimbo, number one from 1987, the start of the Fantagraphics run, start of his own series. Um, that summer special did well enough that they went on and gave him his own comic. Next, we have when he moved over to Mirage, we have Yosagi Ojimbo number one from 1993, start of volume two. Uh, a fairly cheap book to get for the start of a series. Next, we have Yosagi Ojimbo number one from the Dark Horse run, volume three, kicking off in 1996. This was obviously the longest Yosagi run, and uh, followed by his current run, which is Yosagi Ojimbo volume four at IDW, uh, which kicked off in 2019 and then this run has been going for a while now and it did give us an updated origin story in Usagi Yojimbo number six from 2019 as well. Um, so those are the Usagi focus keys. Um, we have a few more keys we're going to talk about just some other characters uh, and their first appearances in Critters number one from 1986 we got the first appearance of Gen. Uh, one of his major uh, partners in crime, not really in crime, but just teams up with Gen a lot through the series. Next, we have the first appearance of Jotaro, um, which is, appears to be the son of some friends, but we'll learn more about Jotaro later if you read this series. Uh, we have the first appearance of Jason, which is the kind of ongoing villain of the series and one of his main villains that he runs into a lot. 
And then finally, we got the first appearance of Kitsune. This is not finally, sorry, one more go. But another fun person that he teams up with quite often and a really great character in Usagi, Ojimbo 32. And then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 47, the first full appearance of Space Usa Usagi, one of the bigger books for a non-Usagi himself focused book. All right, so those were our key comics, both for Usagi and for some of the side characters. Um, hopefully they give you a few books to maybe look for. Now we're going to talk storylines. Uh, this was super tough for me. Normally I only do five storylines. Um, I've started, re in the last couple of years, started reading some Usagi. I had three storylines I kept from the Fanagraphics, which is the volume one um, stuff. So yeah, I had trouble narrowing this down. So we're going to go with 10. Uh, we got 10 storylines we're going to talk about today. Uh, the way I'm doing this is I'm giving the, the exact issues of the storylines and then the collected edition that they're in. Uh, so these are the issues, and then you'll also see where you would go, what collected edition you could find those in if you want to buy the collected editions. Most of the time, the collected edition is bigger than the actual storyline that I'm giving you, although not always. Uh, so here are the important stories for Usagi Yojimbo. Okay, let's start digging into those stories. First up, we have the Dragon Bellow Conspiracy, the first kind of issues 13 through 18 of the first volume, the first kind of bigger event with, that goes multiple issues. We got Tomo, we got Gen, we got Satu Ino. Just a great early Usagi story uh, with more going on than just a single issue. Next, we have Circles. Uh, Jason returns, and we learn the truth about Janturo uh, and what his relationship is in, to Usagi in issues 28 through 31 of Volume 1. Uh, our last Volume 1 story is going to be Gen's story uh, from issues 38 34 through 36 and we get Gin's backstory here and why he is the man he is or the rhino he is i guess um and just a great story about Gin. uh next we move into the dark horse we stuff we move into volume three and we get noodles a story about kitsune's friend noodles that is trad very tragic story here uh in issues one and two but just shows the power of the kind of storytelling usagi can do Next, we have Grass Cutter 1 and 2. Uh, Grass Cutter issues 13 through 22, 39 through 45, largely considered the greatest of the Usagi Yojimbo stories, particularly part 1. And definitely part 2, I included just because. Uh, next, we have Sumi E. Uh, this is a story of Usagi and Janturo uh, on the road together, and a story where Janturo really gets a chance to step up and shine a little bit. Uh, out from the shadows of Usagi in issues 66 through 68. Uh, next we have Tomo story and Treasure of the Mother of Mountains. Uh, the Mother of Mountains is 83 through 89. Tomo story is 90 through 93 plus the color specials 1 through 3. Uh, just a series of stories centered on Tomo and Usagi's friendship. Next we have Sparrows and Jason returns and we kind of get the truth about what he really is and what he's really about uh, in issues 105 through 109 of Volume 3. Next, we have Murder at the End. Uh, Usagi teams up with Inspector Ishidi, Ishida, uh, something that happens quite often, and this is the best of those stories, uh, a two-issue murder mystery in issues 139 through 140. And finally, we have a story from the current IDW run, The Return, which is kind of his from Collected and Homecoming. Uh, Usagi returns to his home village, and we learn more about him and his relationship with the people from his hometown. Okay, as you can see, I cheated because there was actually even more than 10. There was actually like 12, maybe 13 I shoved in there. Um, but... You know, it was super hard, even with it just being one main series talking about. Uh, there was a lot of really good stuff that people were talking about that I still need to read. So I got a long list to read in front of me. Hopefully I gave you a list and some places to start with Usagi. The nice thing with Usagi is you don't necessarily have to go in chronological order. Um, you can just kind of dive in and start getting the stories. Oh, all right. So with that, all that's left is the fun covers. Um, talked about this a little bit. For the most part... All the covers for Usagi have been Sakai uh, all the way through the end of the Dark Horse run. The only exception, there was like one exception in the Fanagraphics run, which is actually a really good cover. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, and it wasn't until this recent IDW run that 
where they started having variants that we actually got art or covers from other artists. So the way I did this, we're going to have five bonus covers from other artists uh, that we're going to talk about first. And then I'm going to go into the 10 Stan Sakai covers that I, were my favorites from Usagi Yojimbo. So hopefully it's give you a whole bunch of covers you can go look for. Um, so without further ado, let's dig into the fun covers for Usagi Yojimbo. All right, first up, those bonus covers. Uh, first, we have the only cover from Volume 1, number issue number 35, that wasn't a Stan Sakai cover. This Ken Stacy cover is amazing, though, and just a great and fantastic cover that deserved to be on this list. Next, we have Usagi Yojimbo, Volume 4, number 6, the Ryan Brown variant. I just love this variant. Uh, Usagi in battle in the rainstorm. Just a really cool cover, in my opinion. Next, we have this Juniba. Uh, variant for number 24 and maybe my favorite variant of any of these was Usagi in the snowstorm getting ready to fight someone. Next we have this Jared Cullum variant for, for issue 29. Uh, just another fantastic variant. I just love this more peaceful, subtle variant. Next we have my favorite of the Peach Momoko variants uh, from Usagi Ojimbo Wanderer's Road number 5. Uh, just She does several fantastic ones. This is my personal favorite though. All right, with that, we're going to move into the Stan Sakai covers. Uh, first, we have Critters, number 14, from 1987. I just love the humor in this cover. Uh, I love his expression. I love the guy behind him. I just think it's a great cover for an early Usagi cover. Next, we have Usagi Yojimbo, number 2, from the Dark Horse run in 96. Uh, just, I don't know what about this one, him coming through the door with someone waiting on him. Just a great cover for me. Uh, we see him in the midst of battle for number 10 for volume 2. Another just fantastic Stan Sakai cover with him on the horse in battle. I think it's a great cover. Next, we have more humor. Uh, Usagi number 30 from 1999. Uh, we see the kid that's painted a scarecrow with Usagi and, I just, and his reaction to it. I just think it's really hilarious. Next, we have my favorite of the Junturo and Usagi covers. There's a couple of good ones in this stretch of the vo of, of the Dark Horse volume, but I love this one for number 73. Next, we have uh, number 99, maybe my favorite cover. I love the way he does the reflection in the water, that it's not perfect, that it's slightly out of focus, but it still works. You can tell what's happening. Just a great cover. Next, we have 101, which is one of the more famous ones. We get a kind of an evil Usagi here. Uh, from 2007, but a great cover nonetheless. Uh, we have the cover I've been using for the thumbnail for all of this, Usagi walking in the rain, the wanderer's life of a of a ronin, uh, a former samurai who without now without a master. Uh, we have this uh, variant for number one from the 2019 run where someone's coming up behind him after he's already defeated an opponent. And then finally we have uh, Usagi Ojimbo, number four from this 2019 run, and where he has a little more, he's done a few of these in this last run, where it's a more Japanese style of art. All right, so we've done the key comics, we've done the important stories, we've done the fun covers, uh, so we've done our look at Usagi Ojimbo. Obviously, I shoved more in here than I normally do. Uh, hopefully, though, it gives you a some, a good place to start if you're going to collect uh, Usagi or start reading Usagi. Um, you can start at the beginning, but you don't have to. Really, you can dive in just about anywhere and you'll quickly pick up what it's about. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and we will catch you next time. Later.